4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Yeah. Always wanted to try that. Welcome, everybody, to the big show. I'm about to have a sneezing attack. Yes, I did just powder my nose because it was looking shiny with the camera up this close. <laughs> Let's get the chat room open. Welcome back. Great to see everybody. Let's see who's here. Uh, Gloria, how are you? Gloria Covington saw her at the road rally. Martin J. Fra, Ken De Potter, Richard Charles, Mark Himley, Dean Crepain. Hello, Dean. Russell, Tune Up, Noblestone, Wadi JP. I was just looking at some road rally photos, which we're going to post on. Um, uh, Facebook, I think, in the photo album section uh, coming up in a few days. So uh, we will uh, see a picture of Wadi JP because there's one from the front looking out at the audience and he's in like the third or fourth row. Uh, Mark Doyle, Mojo, hello everybody. So i got to check my audio levels. How are they over there? Uh, not bad. Okay, so last week we were checking out Dean Crepain's books, talking about reverse engineering uh, instrumental cues, which you know I'm a huge fan of. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time at the top of the show. Usually I stall for like five minutes talking about whatever because I'm waiting for the chat room to fill up. Um, not going to do that this week. We're going to jump right into it. But I do want to mention that the show is largely based on... Whoops. Dean Crepain's wonderful books, Demystifying the Q, which came out, I think, about two and a half years ago. Um, and then that was followed very recently, like early November, I believe, or late October, by Demystifying the Genre. Uh, and this book is, is 22 audio examples that you can find online. And descriptions of how Dean Crepain, uh, one of our longtime and very successful members who's the nicest, most generous guy in the world, and he talks about how it really just can be done simply. Um, I, I like to use the analogy for people think, oh, I don't want to do canned music or formulaic stuff. Um, I, I want to create, I want to be an artist or an artiste. And I say, you know what? You can paint houses by day to keep food on the table and you can paint portraits or whatever, you know, artistic kind of stuff you want to do at night. They're, they're not mutually exclusive. So anyway, when this book came out, which was shortly before our convention, the Road Rally, I started reading it and I went, you know what? This is really, really good. And so I got permission from Dean to use it as the basis of a couple of episodes of Taxi TV. Um, Dean actually did a presentation at our convention that was amazingly good, and I'm kind of moving the, the ball forward a little bit. So I want to start out with, uh, where's my list from last week? Um, last week, I think we got up to a track called Happy Clappy, which was, uh, I think, your, if I remember correctly, kind of your typical... Uh, let me move the dolly back a little bit. Uh, typical uh, ukulele, hand clap, happy. This could be used in a TV commercial for anything from breakfast cereal to laundry detergent to anything that needs that emotionally upbeat, positive vibe. And uh, now we're going to move on to one called Warm Finding. But before we do, I want to talk about heartwarming and positive. And I'm going to quote Dean's book here. Uh, that's why I've got the lights. My lights above me turned down a little lower than usual, so it's hard to see my very wimpy yellow highlights in this book. Um, have you seen that TV commercial, you know, the one where a young man is dropped off in front of his family's home in a suburban neighborhood? It's obvious he hasn't been there in quite a while. Maybe he's been off at college or somewhere. It's a season of Christmas. He opens the front door and he's greeted by his little sister. Yep, I remember that. Uh, they go into the kitchen, pour some coffee, and the young man gives his sister a gift wrap box with a bow on it. She takes the bow off, sticks it on her brother's shirt, and he says something like, what's this for? She answers, you're my present this year. Um, if you haven't seen that commercial, you've certainly seen a million like it. Remember some of the Budweiser ads during the Super Bowl where either a dog or a horse gets lost but somehow manages against all odds, what are the odds, to find its way home. 
a real estate ad, a family moving into a na new neighborhood, finally finding the perfect home, or the one with the young soldier returning home from his tour of duty just in time for his family's Thanksgiving gathering. How appropriate, because this week is Thanksgiving here in the States. Uh, that's what I call heartwarming scenes, sentimental stuff. So Dean goes on to say, make no mistake, the opportunities for placements of heartwarming, positive cues abound. Uh, when I'm pr when I'm writing and producing these cues, I'll often get on YouTube, watch a few of those sentimental commercials I told you about, um, to put myself in the right uh, head and heart space, a sentimental frame of mind, if you will. Uh, I actually write out words like heartwarming, uplifting, positive, sentimental, peaceful, warm, uh, reassuring on a piece of paper in front of my uh, workstation to keep me in the current emotion or correct emotion. So with that in mind, we are going to listen to uh, a heartwarming cue called Warm Finding. And what I want you to pay attention to uh, are the bullet points that Dean lists. Um, come on, fire up, baby. There we go. Yep. Using the old, old CD player still works better than almost anything. Especially because Apple didn't put a CD drive in my latest laptop. Thank you very much, Apple. Um, okay, so things to pay attention to is that it's mid-tempo. It's in a major key. It's acoustic instrument. Very subtle percussion in this thing. It's got an A section and a B section. If you remember from last week's show that... Uh, Instrumental cues generally only have a section or two, not like a song with an intro and a first verse and maybe even a pre-chorus and then a chorus um, and a bridge, all those elements generally speaking, almost without exception. Instrumental cues are just an A section sometimes all the way through, sometimes an A and a B section. And if there is a B section, it often doesn't last for very long. It may appear a couple of times throughout, but generally the A carries the, the Q from top to bottom. And for those of you who weren't here last week and don't know much about Qs, they generally run anywhere between, let's say, 60 seconds up to two and a half minutes. That's kind of the range. They don't have to be exactly 60 seconds. They don't have to be exactly two and a half minutes. They could be 48 seconds. Uh, depends kind of on the tempo and the, the style or genre. There are a lot of things. But editors uh, and music supervisors like to have enough to edit around. So better to give them a little bit much that they can grab from. Um, maybe starting out kind of slow, not slow, but sparse, uh, and then building up as the cue progresses. Um, and they can grab, you know, like the, the sparse stuff or the intermediate stuff that's kind of a full ensemble, or maybe the bigger stuff at the end where it's a very full ensemble. Um, and they can grab what works best for their scene. If you give them something short that's more or less just one vibe, and they should always be kind of one vibe, one emotion, one mood, but just one level of production, then sometimes it may not get big enough at any point and they can't find what they need by editing and looping. So things to consider. And all these rules are meant to be broken. Um, None of them are hard, fast rules, although many of them you'll find are rules that uh, appear frequently. Um, okay, so subtle per percussion, A and B section, and a simple, uplifting melody. You're going to hear the word simple all the time in the world of instrumental cues. Simple, simple, simple. No music supervisor that I've ever met, especially the ones working on reality TV shows, are looking for brilliant composition so much as they're looking for appropriate composition that works to substanti substantiate the mood, um, enhance the mood of the scene. And your cue should be just one thing. Don't score an entire movie. Be one mood or one, uh, eh, I'm missing a word there, but one thing from beginning to end because the scene will be one thing that they put it in. So again, this is called Warm Finding, and this is a mid-tempo, major key, um, heartwarming cue by Dean Crepain.
section. Hear how simple that is? Feels like coming home, doesn't it? Whoa, <laughs> went a little too far there. Um, so, Dean, somebody I know you're in the chat room somewhere, and somebody asked a question about was the piano. Um, Panned. How's the piano panned or mixed? I mean, I think the mix is kind of, uh, Dean says, uh, this mixed it just off center in mono. Uh, <laughs> Russell says he's ready to stop watching and head out to the studio now. Um, it's just, when you hear it, it's so obvious and you think, I could do 20 of those, but unless you're sitting at home uh, with a legal pad on your lap making notes as you're watching TV shows, put the name of the show at the top of the page and then write down the types of cues that are in it. A and your mind is going to explode. And then write the word simple in like foot high letters on a piece of shelf paper and tape it above the monitor in your control room to remind yourself, keep it simple, stupid. The KISS formula works every time. Um, let's see, uh, Noblestone says, this, exam this example kind of partly answers a question I've had about watching a bunch of instrumental cue taxi videos and workshops at the rally. Uh, what are some easy ways to add lift to a solo instrument like piano? Ways to vary the A section? Uh, I, I'm not even a keyboard player and I can answer that question for you. Just add a second part. Just keep it really simple. It could be um, going up an octave, um, hitting some harmonies, anything that says, hey, something new is happening. Um, and depending on the kind of cue, you know, if, if it's a minor, sadly emotional or emotionally sad cue, um, maybe adding a minor harmony if it's major a major harmony it could just be uh that maybe you've got a, a little arpeggio is the main thing going on with your right hand as the main part of your cue and maybe you just add uh, a, a triad on whole notes i mean really really simple basic stuff but it's all designed to draw on the emotion so there you go um Okay, uh, Mojo says, very pretty space around that piano. It did. It had a lot of air. Didn't sound like the, the microphone was crammed right up against the strings. Um, yeah, the, there was a guy, uh, Steve P says, there was a guy, I believe it was Frank Palazzolo, uh, music supervisor at the rally that showed how one song really fit into a bar scene and yet several others didn't and you could actually change the type of bar scene that the audience perceived it to be almost more so than what you were seeing with your eyes but by changing the music you know and i'm just throwing out some examples here but let's say you had uh you know uh, concertina doing French music. It could be, a, you know, a little French bistro. Um, if it were Italian sounding, it, it becomes an Italian restaurant uh, or an Italian, a bar in an Italian restaurant. Um, 
if it's light cocktail jazz, it becomes the kind of place with uh, maybe scalloped, uh, you know, red leather booths in there, you know, and it's upscale. You can almost smell the leather of, of the booths. Um, so music really sets the scene. Obviously, you couldn't have a, a bar with sombreros hanging on the wall uh, and playing, uh, you know, cello in the background, cello and piano together. That wouldn't work well. It'd be incongruous. So congruity means something. All right, we are moving on. Where did my book go? Once again, we are working from Demystifying the Genre by Dean Crepain. Um, Dean says at the end of that, uh, at the end of the heartwarming cue section uh, about that song Warm Finding, or the cue Warm Finding that we just heard, are you amazed yet by how easy it is to achieve this? That's what I've been telling you for years. Um, okay, moving on. Oh, real instruments. I, I brought this up last week. I'm going to mention it again this week. Um, people in the, uh, the music library industry like things that sound authentic. So let's say that you're working mostly in the box and you're using virtual instruments and they sound pretty darn good, but you may not be like a world-class master yet uh, of uh, doing all the things you need to do um, to make horns sound like real horn players played them. Maybe your articulations aren't perfect yet. Uh, maybe your string articulations, your dynamics aren't perfect yet. Maybe the way you've got them panned is a little incongruous with the way they would really be in a real orchestra. You can cover a lot of those mistakes. If you're in the ballpark and reasonably close, take something real and overdub it, like a real piano on top of strings that are coming out of a box or a virtual instrument, and you might be shocked at how that piano grabs the human mind uh, as opposed to a dog's mind or a cat's mind and says, this is real because that piano is real. Sometimes an acoustic guitar laid over a bunch of virtual stuff makes it sound very real. So don't forget that trick. Um, Mojo says it only takes a couple of real instruments to make the whole thing work. Absolutely. Um, oh, I see Vicky Flaw within there. I just saw your post uh, on the forum right before I went live with the show, Vicky. Congratulations. I think she said she had a, a forward on Friday and got a deal offer on Monday or Tuesday or something. One of the really uh, fast turnarounds. Also, um, Marcus Cohen. Um, I believe this was his first road rally and, and put a piece up on the taxi forum about how the the road rally was so awesome for him and his mom, uh, who I met this year. Both great people. Everybody loved them. And just awesome stuff happened for them. Uh, I think about 100 songs are getting signed because of a meeting at the road rally. So there you go. Okay. Uh, moving on. Oh, uh, I'm going to read this section because I've underlined uh, or highlighted a bunch of stuff here. Um, words and virtual instruments. Anxious, suspense, tense, aggressive, trouble, action, chase, danger, fearful, apprehension. Um, these are just some of the words used to describe a tension cue. Tension cues. People love doing tension cues. Libraries like finding tension cues. Shows love using tension cues. But there isn't just one kind of tension cue. Um, when you think ragtime, you can pretty much hear kind of in the ballpark what all ragtime music sounds like, right? Uh, Scott Joplin-esque. Um, tension can be all, you could have game show tension, you could have uh, criminal minds kind of tension, you could have the bachelorette waiting to get the rose tension, you could have um, survivor to see who's going to end up leaving that group of suntan people and going with that other group of suntan people, all different kinds of tension. So Dean is addressing that um, in the first part of the section on tension in his book. Um, and let's see, years ago, television tension cues were mostly done with orchestration. That's true. Sweeping, frenzied string sections, um, booming percussion, or maybe just the simple stark low notes on a grand piano. 
These days, tension cues are largely put together using virtual instruments. Arpeggio synth patches and thunderous drum kits may dominate a high-energy chase scene, while a simple one-note uh, one sustaining drone might be used in a more subtle suspense scene. Heavy metal, um, EDM, and urban hip-hop have also found their way into the tension cue world and can be uh, extremely effective in the appropriate scene. So, yeah, anything can practically work as tension. You just have to imagine the scene and then write to what you're imagining. And you know what? Don't sit there and wait for the muse to drop a scene in your lap. Again, turn on the TV and, and turn on shows that you know have tension, whether it's a, you know, like a dating bachelorette kind of show, that's one kind of tension, a game show, and, and sit down and write down the three or four different kinds of tension that are kind of within a range that you would find in that genre of TV. So uh, with that keeping in mind, um, Dean says, let me start by giving you an example of a tension cue that's straight down the middle of the genre spectrum with my track Under the Gun. Uh, it's a short 70-second cue that uses an arpeggio synth and a variety of sweeping pads as well as percussion, bass, and drums. Under the Gun is in a minor key with those fundamental attributes, uh, with these fundamental attributes. It starts off with a dark, energetic groove and a heartbeat kick and bass. Um, slowly builds in intensity by adding bass and drums. Then it builds more tension and interest with a variety of synth pads that are introduced. Uh, and then a dark pad drones throughout the whole thing. Very little to no discernible melody. Interesting, right? Music, but songs melody. Wow. Uh, the cue is virtually more, uh, or is really more like an underscore. Sometimes you want a cue to be a feeling that get you in the, you know, in your chest or in the back of your neck. Um, it's visceral. It's not melodic. It doesn't tell a story, but it, it gives you a feeling. The same kind of feeling the director or the writer are trying to give you at the scene. Um, it's in a minor key. It doesn't break the mood or the vibe. Important. Remember, your cue is rarely, if ever, the star of the scene. The actors and the writing are the star. The music is there to support and enhance. Um, never changes chords, never goes to a B section. So here we go. With all that in mind, let's have a listen to Dean's Tension Cue called Under the Gun. There's the heartbeat. Under the gun. Simple but effective, right? Uh, any questions you guys want to run by Dean before we move on to another one? Um, which is another variety of tension cue. Um, and that one is called Tropical Lava. Something going on at every frequency. Um, hmm, people are talking about the video being frozen. The bandwidth on my end, I hate to say because I don't want to jinx it, but everything is really good. And I'm broadcasting at a medium bit rate, so it's not like I'm pushing out too much stuff for you guys to handle. Um, the only bit rate low, slower is the uh, like from a mobile phone. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a really good question from Noble Stone. I think this is for Dean. Uh, how do you work in edit points on slow tracks? I 
I guess I should do something. Keep moving. <laughs> because I always feel bad when somebody asks a question. It's got to go from them to us to back to Dean, and then he's got to type in an answer. So how do you work in edit points uh, on slow tracks? And I know that Dean, not unlike myself, is not the greatest typist in the world. And Dean answers by saying, when I write, natural edit points seems to find, seem to find themselves. I write like a songwriter. Uh, and I want to clarify something about edit points. We talked about this uh, at the convention a couple of weeks ago. Some people think that an edit point means that it's like a full rest, where everything just shuts down and there's an obvious gap. Um, and it can be that, but it's rarely that. An edit point can simply be, oh, this is an obvious end of a section, and that kick drum would be really great to edit on. Um, because if you think back to the days of taking quarter inch tape and rocking it over the playback head, you know, you're looking for a beat that you can cut on. Um, same thing would be true of a hi hat or a snare drum. There's so many things that are um, dynamic enough or percussive enough that you can actually see the waveform and, and cut right on them and just look for the reciprocating version of it on the other side to cut. Um, Mark Himley wants to know, all these great cues tend to be under two minutes. Any good tips for extending cues to be over two minutes to fit most taxi listings? Um, and by the way, you know, we ask the library owners all the time, uh, you know, how long do you want it? Uh, I don't know, a couple minutes, I guess. Some will say, you know, a minute or a minute and a half. Others will go, whatever. Um, we've had very experienced taxi members tell us two minutes is always safe. Better to give them a little more than um, too little. As I explained at the top of the show, you want to give them enough that they can find what they want within the queue rather than having to do the work of, of searching hard and going, oh, it never gets big enough, therefore not going to loop it, therefore we're going to move on to something that does get bigger. Um, Dean says, for over two minute cues, he just cuts and pastes and add or subtract a few parts. Seems easy enough. All right, so moving on now. Um, let's go. This is another type of uh, tension cue variation. This one's called Tropical Lava. Uh, and just some notes about that. It starts out with a ukulele, a bass, a low piano, percussion, and piano. Um, it's in a minor key only got an A section um, with one variation. Acoustic piano rhythm throughout plus melodic riffs. Uh, various percussion elements. Acoustic guitar melody licks. Um, fast tempo, 160 BPM. Uh, high string added for life and interest. So let's have a listen to Tropical Lava.
and there's tropical lava. Um, so Dean mentioned while that was playing that uh, it, it was written on assignment. They needed a tension cue with an ukulele for some shows shot in Hawaii. So why don't you guys try and, and think of some scenes where that would uh, be used appropriately? Um, let's say it was done for the show Hawaii Five O. Um, what kind of scene would that be used for? Boy, that looks distracting. Very colorful, too, I might add. Bikers on a road trip. Are you talking about, like, motorcyclists or guys on 10 speeds? Or 15 or 20 speeds, I guess, nowadays. Um, I don't know why you guys are getting kicked off today. We're, we're just having no problems on this end. Um, earlier, Russell Landwehr said that he generally does stuff in like two to two and a half minutes. Um, and Pedro's agreeing with him. Uh, Dean says he thinks it actually was done for Hawaii Five O. Um Crime scene investigation in a tropical bar, could be. Uh, Jack Lord chasing somebody. Um, I mean, not an actual chase scene, but because uh, that would be chase music. But you know, he's pursuing. Isn't funny, uh, you know, sometimes it's all in the choice of words. Pursuing somebody is different than chasing. Uh, montage of a detective interviewing locals, that's great. Uh, Mary Band says, nowadays, whenever I hear music on TV shows or commercials, I wonder, did one of my taxi friends write that? I, I think you'd be surprised how often that's true. I hear stuff and, and I'm poking my wife in the ribs going, honey, honey, hear that? that that's a taxi member. I've heard that before. Um, anyway, uh, okay. So let's do a couple more here, and then I'm going to open it up largely uh, for Q&A. Um, this one's called Puppy Chase, and this is a kid's adventure TV show style. See, a different kind of tension. Um, I feel another sneeze coming on. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, there it is. <laughs> the cosmetics I wear so I can look non-shiny for the show every week. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, this type of tension cue needs to have suspense and energy, but it can never get too dark and scary. Why? Because the cues are often for shows that feature animals, pets, or wildlife, and are watched by children. I think Dean played this one at the road rally, um, and he talks about, yeah, you know, you, you don't want to kill an animal in front of the kids, right? Um, so there needs to be some tension. Um, and emotion as an animal struggles to overcome obstacles and survive, but most television show producers don't want to bring their child viewers to tears by frightening them. That's really cool of them. Um, so doing so can make a lot of parents angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the easiest ways I found to make a middle-of-the-road tension cue kid-friendly is to put marimbas in it. Don't get too minor with the key. Ultimately, uh, uh, eliminate the third of the root chord if possible. I'm going to say that once again. Eliminate the third of the root chord. Um, don't get too heavy with stark instruments. Makes sense. Um, and Dean's go-to combination, and it's funny because people who are very experienced at making instrumental cues, they have templates, uh, whether they, they've got them programmed or written down or just in their heads. But Templates. In this case, uh, Dean's go-to combination is drums, bass, percussion, marimba, piano, electric guitars, uh, synth pads or strings, the key signature leaning more major than minor, um, and arpeggio synth patterns and or loops. So uh, here we go. This is Puppy Chase. Notice how the tension and suspense in the vibe of this cue, but, ne but there's never fear or mortal danger. 
Okay, it's kid safe and tear free. So let's have a listen to Puppy Chase. <laughs> 